Hi everyone, I'm Robbie Herring and I'm here tonight for Live with Prima. Um, it's been a while since I've been here so I'm super excited to be back and excited to see some new people and people that we've seen a lot so that's always fun and I have a couple of announcements that we're going to start out with. Um, the first thing is that Frank will be creating a gorgeous album next and that's on Tuesday December the 8th at 11 a.m. at 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, and then also really exciting and I can't wait for y'all to see all this but the sneak peeks on the Prima blog are starting on Monday December 7th and that's uh, prima.toppad.com and then also if you haven't been watching the blog you might want to go over there because we're having a 12 days of Christmas card challenge and that's also on the blog and again that's prima.toppad.com so lots going on lots of fun products coming y'all are going to love them um, the design team we've been playing with them and lots of fun new stuff coming so to move along I'm going to go ahead and move y'all down and like I said y'all bear with me a little bit for this camera just in case hang on and we're going to hope I get it right tonight without any mess Let's see of course it's hope y'all aren't dizzy because I am okay and if y'all have any trouble or I hit it, because I'm pretty known for that, y'all let me know. And might be, can y'all see? All right. So here's the cards we're going to make. I don't know if y'all have noticed or seen yet, but Jamie Doherty, uh, and I may not be saying her name right, she came out with a Creating in Faith collection. And there are fabulous stamps and rub-ons and her dolls that are always so beautiful. Um, and I decided to make some little cards that were inspirational and while I was doing this I was looking at these flowers and I thought those are so pretty and I want to use several of the sentiments and you can see I did and once I at first I thought maybe I'll put one but then when I did the three colors on each card I decided you know I'm gonna do three because more is good and these are really easy and I'm gonna walk y'all through each step and I'm gonna move that white off we're gonna have a little bit of white but then I think once we start using the color, it's uh, it's not going to be a it's not going to be an ongoing problem. Okay, now the I went ahead and pre-cut the cards. Um, decided that would be easier. Y'all know how to cut the cards, um, but I'll tell you that they are each five by seven, um, seven this way. And this is the watercolor paper, and this is a Prima watercolor pad. And this one I happen to use is the eight and a half by eleven and this is really high quality paper and love the Prima watercolor paper so y'all if you don't have that that's another thing you might want to add to your stash and then I'm putting those aside because I did two layers and so this will layer on top and this one I just wanted a little half inch border it's going to stay white but so the piece that we're going to work with that goes on top is four and a half by six and a half okay next thing is is the watercolors and I'm gonna need my mat for this I'm gonna try to keep it mostly to the side because with the lighting it seems to be picking up a glare I used several like I said this all started with the stamps but the other thing that it was inspired by was this package of Nico flowers and these are you know I didn't give you the number for that watercolor pad let me tell you that real quick that is eight four seven seven four six and then these these Nico flowers their number is eight five eight two zero six seven and you can see they have a lot of colors in them and I chose to use to find watercolors that matched and so I used the uh, basics and these are very vibrant I love them and this is five seven six seven one four I chose a few colors from that and you can see these are well loved mine are not they don't stay clean because I get them wet and I'm good with that and then also I used one pencil from the scenic root collection um, and that one is five seven six six nine one um, there is a blue in here that probably would have worked but I decided to go ahead and recreate exactly what I had done before okay so I'm going to do the backgrounds pretty much simultaneously. I think that'll be easier and give us a little bit of time, hopefully, to go over how I did the Christmas ones uh, next. So I'm going to put them there so I can see them. All right. 
And I'm going to tell y'all which colors I used as I go. And here's a little tip for y'all that sometimes I do. And I actually did it with some of my markers. And today I was having to remind myself of what, I, what colors I used. And so sometimes if you're not sure how your color is actually going to look, I like to make these little cards. And that'll tell me what each of the different colors looks like. So today I figured out so we could be on track for what we were going to do. Okay, the 64 room, this, this blue one is number 64. And remember, that one's from the Scenic Root. The rest of the colors that I'm going to tell you about are from the, uh, the Basics collection. All right, so um, you're going to see this over here just a bit. Like I said, it picks up so much glare to keep it easier. I'm going to not have it all totally visible. And I'm going to start with, let's see, we're going to start with the green. And this is number 44. And I know everybody kind of does this differently, so you can choose. Um, but the main thing is you want to get yourself a flood of color. And I love these, uh, and I don't have the number, Carrie, I'm sorry. These uh, Prima Water Brushes, they make this super, super easy to do. You can also dip your Prima Paint Brushes or any of your paint brushes in some water. And I'm going to give myself a little bit of color here. And so you can see I've just added some color, and I can always add more if it turns out light. And then let me grab my brush. And these paint brushes, again, this is a uh, three-quarter inch of the paint brushes. And like I said, you can tell I, I, I really love my stuff. And all I did to start, and this is matching all, it's matching six of the seven large, actually, yeah, six of the seven large flowers. And let me put this up here where you can see a little better. Making sure I'm all in camera range. And I like, I like this metal ruler just mainly because everything wipes off of it real quick. And there's no rhyme or reason, but I do want a fairly straight line for this particular design. So I just line it up. And I'm telling you all, this is so easy. And I'm going to give myself a stripe of color. Well, maybe I'm not. I don't have enough water. It was a good idea. <laughs> and I'm the worst about sucking the paint back up in these. So um, I probably just did it. But if you will release the paint instead of like when it's a little above it, that helps keep the paint out of it. So when you move on to the next color. Let's see. Okay, that should be enough. Pick up some here. Okay, so we're just going to give ourselves a line of color. And I'm not going all the way to the end. And because it's watercolor and this paper's terrific, it's forgivable. So if you want to stop or if you have some overlap, that's totally fine. And just make sure that you end up with a fairly straight line. Doesn't have to be perfect. And if you look at my original cards, the edges are kind of rough, and I'm totally good with that. So no worries about that. And then you're literally going to move. Whoops, I just lost my whole roll of paper towels down there. May have to get under the table here in a second and get them. Okay, so then you're going to move on. We, each color we're only using once for this. So then we're going to move on. And I'm, I've kind of gotten organized tonight to, uh, to make it easy and know what I'm doing and have a few of these ready to go. Um, the next color in this, let me show you real quick, is this kind of bluish purple in the flower. And that one, I wasn't finding the perfect match. The rest of the colors, I had the perfect match. So what I did was, is I took number 64 and I took number 80. And I started, um, it's heavier, heavier on the purple color. So I wanted more of the purplish color, but I definitely added in a bit of blue. And this is another thing that the cards that I showed y'all have in your... Uh, your cards set out, you can mix some colors and come up with your own custom colors. And what's neat is, is it's not just for the watercolor pencils. You can mix um, your bloom sprays. You can mix your uh, oil pastels. And one of the things I really like in all of this is the whites. So when I want something really soft from these more vibrant colors, I can always go back in. Whoops, let me move that so I don't drip it. Um, and then I added a bit of this blue. But I can always go back in and lighten it down a little bit to get exactly my color. And, and I love the whites for that. 
And I think that is pretty much it. And let's do, yeah, I'm going to need, the one thing that I do use with this is a lot of paper towels because I want, I don't want to mix my colors. Okay, so same brush. And now I already have a pretty basic line. So we're going to do just one more line. And I don't know how well y'all can see, but I am not touching it quite. Because of the water, it's watercolor paper, it's going to, well, and see, I did it anyway. It's going to bleed a bit because I'm also, for the class, I'm not letting it dry. But that's going to be okay for tonight. But I will show you so you know that it's really better if you let it dry. And in fact, I'm going to lift this right off maybe. See if we can lift it off a bit. I've totally, it's live. That's what's going to happen, right? All the other colors we're going to dry in between. I was hoping not to have to do that, but we're going to. And you can go back and fix that. Let's get that off a little bit. But I'm not going to spend a lot of time fixing it because now you know. You can learn from my mistakes. Okay. But even when you do dry it, keep it a little bit away to avoid that problem. Okay. So that is it, and I'm going to add a little bit more to this purple, a little bit more color. There we go. And see, nothing to it. And we're going to move on to the next one. And these pencils, I mean, I use them and use them, and they are terrific, and they're soft, and you can see how easily that color is coming off. So let's do the orange. And let's get another one. And we're going to do a little bit of orange. Oh, and I didn't tell you all this number. This one is number 22. Make sure I get enough. See, I'm sucking it up again. I do that. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm letting the water out, and then I'm doing it. Okay, that should be good. And let's get the brush. And let's see if this one goes better. <laughs> I think I have it dry enough. And again, it's just a stripe. And I want to fairly, I just want them to extend pretty much the same. So that is it. And let's give that one a little bit of a dry. And for some reason tonight, I think I must be using a little too much water because they're bleeding a little bit on me. Maybe the next one will go a little better. This would work perfect for tags. And also, this, this is warping a little because I'm drying it so fast. Watercolor paper, paper will warp a bit, but we're going to kind of take care of that in this class, too. Okay, now I'm going to set that aside and let it finish, and then we're going to do the other colors. And this one, let's see. This next one is, uh, I think it's this one. So this one's going to start with um, number... 32. I think I lost my little cards. Let's see if this is the right color. I think it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Excuse me. I thought, wait a second. And that's that's another thing about the cards. You can see that um, making those little cards works nicely because you can see on here it's a lot purple on the deal. But actually, this is not the right one. Lovely. It's going to be one of those knots, maybe. And I lost my little things. Let's see. Let's pick a... We're going to go with it. I think it'll work. Okay, this one is a bit more pink. I don't know. Oh, that's because I'm using the wrong pencil. 
Okay, we're going to do the center first because the pink first. That's my problem. I've got the right stuff, just not the right order. And you can do this this way too. I need to move that out of my way a bit. You can even go to the center and do it this way too. You don't have to start at the bottom. So I'm just going to do this one in the center. And again, because the pink is in the center on this, on this particular card. At least I didn't have the whole wrong colors out. Okay, so there's our pink. And I'm going to give that a bit of a dry. I'll clean this up. I hope the rest of y'all have issues like this occasionally. <laughs> I'm looking at the thing. Um, the last color is, let me tell you, it's number 32. And that is from the basics one. And I see Kathy and Mildred. I'm trying to see who's here. Hi, Delena. Okay. Now, next up is going to be the purple. We'll do it next. I'm getting some of this water out here. Let's just choose another. All right. Here's my purple. <laughs> and this one is number 80. That's enough. All right, I'm going to have to get under my table and grab my paper towels. Make sure I have this clean because, like I said, on this one they match, and I would like for them not to have too much other color. Oh, I'm almost out of camera range, aren't I? And you can see, I'm not worrying about putting these in exactly the same place I did last time. You can turn it over if you're a little unsteady to get your edges. And here's the purple. Okay. And this one we're not even going to have to dry because we're going to go on the other side. Okay. And the last one is, let me clean this off. The last color is the... Uh, the blue. Oh, I didn't tell you the number, and I don't have that cleaned off. Let's see. This is green. Okay, this number is number 64. Uh, here we go. And y'all can see how quickly this actually goes. Not much to it. But I think sometimes the simple ones I end up lacking. I really loved the, how vibrant these colors were. Okay. And what did I do with that brush? There it is. <laughs> Too many things going on. Okay, so last one is the blue. It goes here. Now, of course, you could take any colors you wanted you could match it to any flowers. There are several different sets of the watercolors um, that you could, uh, you know, buy and have a very big volume. Yeah, that's my problem. I'm getting this too wet. Okay, here we go. All right, now let me give this one a quick little dry. And I'm going to do, here's another thing too, you can always drag that color a bit more if you want to and add a bit of color. So that one got a little light, so I'm just going to add a bit more color. And the other thing is, here's another little thing, if you're getting that to where it's a little light, you can always take your damp brush and put it directly and help make it more vibrant. Get yourself a bit more color just from going directly from the pen or the pencil. There you go. So see, that adds a bit more vibrancy there. Okay, that is it for that part. So that is how simple the base of these are. And let me move these all out of my way. And we're going to, and then what I did was I want to show y'all how I went about, i got to finish drying this real quick. Y'all are going to have to forgive this one that the color 
got a little thing. I'm not going to go back and do it because I'm hoping to have enough. And I'm not going to go back and fix it. But you can take some a uh, paper towel and kind of keep dabbing that up. Don't rub it. Just keep dabbing that color up. And you can go back over it with that color and make it more green. So there's, there's really not any true mistakes. You can fix this stuff. But you can see by drying it in between how much nicer it, it sat there. Okay. Now, I want to show you all these stamps. These are the, uh, the clean stamps. They're the phrases. And there's several phrases. And there's lots of pretty little designs in it. And this is number 980702. I'm just going to pull it all out. And what I decided, like I said, I decided that sometimes less is more. And it was a simple design. So it could handle several stamps going on. And I'm just going to do, you can choose like whichever one you want. And what I liked, what I did with these, and I know this is a little, but it works for me. It's a little kind of out there, but I like how easy this made it. I went ahead and I placed the ones I was going to use. And I, I did. I'm just copying what I did before, but I did spend a, you know, a little bit of time thinking, which ones do I want to put on the same one? And I laid them down. And instead of having to like stamp each one and get them all right, I got them pretty much, and you can see this has worked a little bit, like I said, but we're going to fix that. So, and then what I did was I lined this up somewhat and I put it on that way. And then they're already all three, pretty much this one got bent. I felt it move, so I'm going to fix it a tiny bit. But, uh, but if you're careful and you can stand over it to look a little bit and you're not on camera, you can see I've got them lined up. The other thing is, too, is this Prima, another thing I don't have the number for, and I don't see it on here. And um, this Prima stamp pad with this handle is like phenomenal. If you use it, I, had, I have to admit, I just got one and I was like, I am never using my other stamp thing again because this one is terrific. All right, this is Watermark. I should have showed you all the lid. This is a um, Bursamark Watermark stamp. Um, and that's what I like to do when I'm embossing. And we're going to emboss these. And so just tap it on a bit. And then remember, we're going to go back. I'm going to hold this down a bit. Line it up. Again, if it doesn't line up perfectly, no worries. Okay. And you can push with the handle, but I'm pushing a little closer to make sure that I get it on there good. Because I can't get over it. <laughs> okay, and this is um, just seafoam white. It's a true white, though. It's not a uh, it's not a uh, an embossing powder. It's not a clear. Make sure when you're doing this, you do a pure a true white. Because if you do the clear, it will not show up. And then I have to. If you haven't embossed, this is fun. I know it's and this this gun is loud, but I'm gonna do. It. And I'm going to put it up here a little bit. Um, if you haven't done it before, if you watch, if you can hear me, you'll, you can watch, especially with the white, you can see it start to change to know that it's set. And it doesn't take long at all. So there you go. I think that's it. Okay, so there we go with that. And then let's do the other one real quick. If I can find where I stuck it. <laughs> I lost my other card. There it is. <laughs> okay, and this one I used three different sentiments. So I'm going to pull these off of here. And I, I just noticed I'm out of camera range because I'm working. I'll move that out of my way. Okay, let's get you back in here. Okay, and this one, I, I should have told you all that other one says, I will not fear for he is with me. Let your faith, uh, let faith be bigger than your fears and my faith will not grow weary. This one is going to say he is my rock and my salvation. And uh, God is within me, I'll never fail. Having trouble, they're sticking to my fingers. And praise the Lord for all his glory. And I think these are very inspirational and 
would make a make a great pick me up too. So, here we go. Okay, and again, I'm gonna see if I can get over it a little bit further and get a little closer this time. So you can see, I'm just gonna do it that way. And again, same same thing. We're just repeating it. And put it down. I do better when I when I can stand up at times. Okay, and again, here's just the embossing powder. Oh, I missed a spot. Okay, and again, sorry for the noise. You're gonna have to listen to it one more time. And it takes a second for these heat guns to heat up a bit, but once they do, it goes fast. And watch your fingers too. I'm not getting close to my hands with this because it burns if you get close. And so here's this one. And we are ready. And you, you'll you'll see when if you were to compare these to the others, I haven't put the stripes in the same places. Um and I purposely didn't on the other, not, I say purposely, I didn't worry about it. So wherever they kind of went is where I, what I did with it. Okay. And I talked about <coughs> um, taking care of the tiny bit of warping. Um, I, I wanted them to not just be flat with the white on the white card. So this is just chipboard that I have left over from who knows what. And that I just cut a hair smaller than the other. Uh, or then the piece so it would be hidden and this is three in one glue and I just glued them down and if you're not live in an ideal world you would you would kind of like maybe put a book or something a little heavy on them to make them stick in this case I'm just gonna let I'm gonna move that one aside and then I'll hold them a second and let them grab you can distress the edges of this white before you attach it if you'd like. Or you can leave it this way and have it neater. It's totally personal preference. And then I took my cards, and again, five by seven card. And I added these to it. and just left a little bit of the edge there. And I guess in the process somewhere along the way I have touched the orange a bit. <laughs> okay, and so there you have it. And that gives you just a little bit of added interest, nothing major. And like I said, if you lay something on here with that, with that three in one, it'll stick and it'll take care of any of the little bit of warping. I personally don't worry about things like that. But if it's something that drives you crazy, there's your answer to fix it. I think we all have our things that really bug us. And you can see, I'll show you on this one. You can see there's, I didn't worry too much. And you can even see the, in this case, I used a little bit of cardboard, I think. So just whatever you have on hand for that. This isn't going to show. It doesn't need to be archival. If you're big on archival, it's a card. So you can use cardboard or whatever you have. I'm looking. I see Joanne. Hi. And I see Tiffany's here. Hi, Tiffany. I'm sure I'm missing people because I'm only looking up at the chat. I didn't get that even at all. I'm looking at the chat, not paying attention to my card. There you go. <laughs> Never a good thing. So here we go. Now we're ready. And y'all are going to see how fast this goes, too. So I started out with the wire thread. You can see this. And you can see that I am desperately in need of some more. I am almost out of this because I use it so often. And this is number uh, 572068. And I'm just going to cut myself a bit of it. And we're going to do this card first. I'm going to move that one. And all I did was, is I put some glue down. 
or I didn't put some glue down. I did a little loop. You can do it any way you want. But I made a little loop and I just put a little bit of glue down. And this is just my background. And odds are it's going to pop up a bit. And that's okay because I'm just going to get it started and see if I can get it to just kind of catch a bit. And do because the flowers are also going to help hold it down. And this wire sometimes will pop around a bit. So let's hold that one there. And then let's put a little bit here. And I'm just going, and I'll show you this a little bit better um, once I get it to catch. I'm just kind of going in opposite directions um, with the loops because I want it to show in different places. And that one doesn't want to stick. So you can see that this loop went one way and this loop went the other. And then I'm going to go ahead and go back this way again. Like I said, it, this, is, this is typical that it doesn't catch very well. But if you hold it a second, it'll catch well enough that you can, uh, your flowers will hold it down perfectly at the end. Or anything else, or you can take your time and really hold it till it dries. This glue will hold it. It won't move once it's, once it's caught. Let's see. Okay. That looks pretty decent. Let's see. So now I'm not going to trim it yet. I'm going to wait till I get my flowers on. I think it's catching to my fingers. Okay. Now the flowers. There we go. And you can see there are so many in this package, and there's so many pretty colors. And there's these large roses, and then there's all these small little pretty pieces. And again, this number is 582067. And I'm going to choose the ones. I'm just going to snip them off here because I'm not keeping the backs. I don't need the wire here. I'm not using them for anything for this card. And let's see, I got the purple, the pink, and the blue. And then I'm going to glue them down. And again, this is the three in one. I normally use Fabri-Tac. Um, I, I think I like it better. They're so close, it's hard to tell. Uh, but Fabri-Tac or something that'll catch. See, the flowers catch really quickly. Oh, let's see if I can put the pink one with the pink. And you're just matching these up by color. Gonna fix that. Okay, and I'm making sure they're in a line. And you can see that my purple one was hanging over a little bit, so I'm just gonna scoot this blue one and make it work. And these, I didn't really scrunch them up or anything. I just kind of put them upright because where the, the things going other directions and not being all just facing in a row. Because this is pretty, but it's not. I'm going to scoot that just a hair more. Uh, but it's not as pretty as it would be, uh, as it'll be when we add more. That wire and I, are, nothing and I are getting along tonight. Here we go. Let me get that loop done correctly. Okay. So, now let's add the other flowers. And then once this catches a little bit, I'll, do, I'll fix that little loop a little bit. Okay, these are Rodant flowers, I believe is the name of them. Um, this is a box that has so many white flowers in it. There's also the pillar uh, flowers if you like those or you have that. This is 577759. And what I did was, is I just took some of these white ones and just, I'm going to use this size and I'm just going to tuck them in here and there. Let me show you. You can use, I like to use the ends of my scissors to add these. And I do want to tell you too that although this catches quickly, it also, you've got a little time. It's going to catch, but it's not going to truly dry to where you can't move it when, if you want to. There you go. Okay, this seems to be set a little better. And let's see, let's put another one. And there's so many in here. I've been using this box and there's so many flowers in it, which is terrific too, because they make great to stand alone or great to 
add to your project. One other little thing is I am being careful to make sure the wires over my sentiment a bit, but I, I am being careful not to have the weight of the flowers over it so you can see it. The wire you can still read. Um, you can use your little nonstick scissors to pop those in if you don't go into the center. Okay. And then it also has these pretty tiny ones on this little vine. I, I cut some of these off and use them for centers on these flowers. Um, instead of, you could use a bead or whatever, but I chose just to use these little tiny white flowers to tuck into the center. You can use your finger or you can use the scissors. It's usually a little bit easier to get the scissors to get them to tuck in there. That loop that I messed up is bothering me. There we go. <laughs> and then here we go. And I missed that one a bit. Push it up in there. And then I took, once I got it all straight, and let's see. Let me just set it up so I can look at it. I'm going to open these up a tiny bit. There we go. So you can see here's where we're at. And then I like to curl these. And I don't know what this is, but you could use a pencil. This somehow ended up in this room, and it's perfect for this because it's the same size. And just wrap it around something and place it if you want to. I generally don't. You can even add a touch of glue if you want. Here, you can't see that very good. Sorry, I looked up. You can even add a touch of glue right up under here to hold it. I don't worry about that. And then the same way with this one, just wrap it around. Give yourself a few little loops. And then this one, as you can see, the piece is too long. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a trim. And here we go. And you can keep adding. I kept these fairly simple and straightforward. And then the last thing I did on this one was, if I can find it, is I put the little, here they are, the little Saya and Crystals. These are from the Debutante collection. And I have bought so much of these that they're, they're my go-to thing. But as you can see, if you haven't seen them before, they're little roses. Aren't they pretty? And I just tucked a few of these here and there. And since I moved that little loop and got a little glue there, I think I'll just cover it right up. I'm going to pull this out. Oh, I didn't take it. Maybe I did. 579364 is the number. And then let's add maybe one here and one there. And we are done. That is the whole card. Yeah, eh, maybe not. I think we I think I want one more. Why not? <laughs> there we go. Now it goes the whole length. So that is it, y'all. That was the whole entire thing. And the next card is exactly the same thing. And um I'm looking at my time and debating. This we're gonna do exactly the same thing. Except what I'm going to do is, because I want to show y'all, I don't think we're going to make it through a Christmas card, but I definitely want to show y'all how they came together. So let's get this one done as quick as possible. Um, let's see where we go. Here's these. Where's my wire? And actually, you know what? Now we'll go ahead and do it. I keep thinking maybe we ought to move on and show you the Christmas card, but let's go ahead and get this started instead. I'm going to hide that. I'm just going to go ahead and give myself a little bit of glue here. See if we can speed it up a bit. And again, we're going different ways. I'm going to go ahead. No, no perfection here, no rhyme or reason. And it's wire, so you can always redo it. If you don't like it, you can play with it and get it right. Here we go. And then let's get this one. 
And basically I'm working in that vertical pattern. It's still the same thing, working just to where the whole card goes vertically. Let's see if I can get these to stick. Thank you, Joanne. And here we go. All right, same thing. Let's do the flowers. And this is this color. We're going to do the orange and the green and this bluish purple color. And looking at this now, this I didn't get as much blue, but you, you, I don't know if y'all have seen these. They have more than one color in each one of them. They're really neat. They're really pretty, and they make this process with the going with the watercolors just perfect. Because even when I mix this color, it's a little bit lighter, but that color's definitely still in there, which is nice. But if you're not happy and you want to go back, you can always go back and add a little blue or a little purple, whatever it is that you weren't as happy with, maybe. And the orange. And this is the base for it. And I'll pull that up a little bit. Let me hold it. So what happens when you try to hurry, you don't let things dry. So there you go. And then this, I did the same thing. I added some of these flowers. And you can see by this box sitting here, I'm not really, I'm just kind of going for the same size. This, this flower package has lots of different sizes um, and, and different like finishes or they almost, I guess I'd almost call them embossed. It's got different designs to each one. That works, right? Designs. And tuck those in there. Like I said, remember you got a little forgiveness here, so while you're tucking them in, if it's, you know, if you're not liking it or you get them placed and you still aren't real thrilled, no problem. You still have some time. But once they stick, this glue is, these glues are all, these Beacons glues are all perfect for, I think, for card making and things to travel or, you know, stand up because, to the test of time, because these glues really do hold these things once they're set. So you don't have to worry about a card arriving and not being in the in the shape it was when you when you sent it. And let me get this turn it where I can see it a bit. Get that in there. Okay and in this one on this one with the orange I had these nifty little, whoops, can't grab hold of them, these tiny orange ones, and you can see these are so pretty. They have little pearlized centers, and I added a couple of those to this one. And this is actually the a little bit darker than and I just looked up at the other card, and on it I used the lighter ones, but I like these too. So we're sticking with them. And tuck it under. So you can see how if you got rolling on these, you could make a lot of these cards really fast. Because even with all the talking I've done, they're still going pretty quickly. Let's see if I can get that one. It doesn't want to do what I want it to do. Okay. There you go. And then let's give this a, a twirl. Didn't do so hot there. Let's do it this way. It's funny. 
I don't know if I've ever said it. I, I know I didn't say it tonight. I work like really close to myself, almost in my lap. So sometimes when I'm doing the shows, it's like I can't really see the way I'm used to seeing. And then give this one a little snip. Get rid of the excess. And again, however you want to do it, you can do them long, you can do them short. Let me move some of this out of the way. And on this one, I did the same thing with the, I used the same debutante centers. Only on this one, I went with the white because I didn't have the pink, uh, or the other one, the pink I thought I loved. This one, I loved the white because this card doesn't have any pink on it. So same centers. And this one, I just added a couple. And let me straighten it up, make sure my line, my vertical is straight. And maybe like this one, the orange one, I'm going to open it up a bit. And again, there you go. That is it. Unless you have to keep moving it to get it in line. There you go. So that's it, y'all. And you can see that where it bled a little bit, it's not a tragedy. In fact, I think with the flowers, you don't really even notice it that much. So that is it for those cards. And I'm really glad we have a little bit of extra time. Um, and hopefully y'all will stay with us. Uh, <laughs> uh oh, I saw that I'm out of the, the frame. I'm glad I'm not the only one, Tiffany. All right, here we go. Now, so what I did was, is I was worried because these are very simple. But of course, when you're live, things tend to take a little bit longer. So I want to show y'all these and tell you about them in this couple of minutes we have left. When I did these, and you can see, it's the exact same design. I used the same wire. I used totally different flowers and totally different colors. Now, what I loved about going with the Christmas, and I'm going to tell y'all what these are. Um, if you miss it, there I know on uh, Facebook with the Live with Prima, uh, there's all the product numbers are there as well. And so there's a product list here. And this is the beautiful Frank Garcia's Victorian Christmas collection, which is stunning. But these, my pencils, I wasn't finding exactly the right colors to match these. And I also thought it might be neat to just see if I could do something a little bit different. So I'm going to show y'all really quick. I, I can see we're not going to have time for, for me to do this, but I'm going to show y'all what I did instead. Um, but I used my color bloom sprays. So I chose different colors and again, you can mix them. And this is where this white comes in for the green. I was able to mix the lime wedge and the frost to get the same thing. It works identically. Just use the same size brush, the same size everything, but you can use these. I also, and I don't have it here, I also played a little bit with the oil pastels. If that's what you love and that's what you want to use, you can do the same thing with the oil pastels. But you're able to get all the colors you want either way, and you can mix them. And I will put on my blog, I will, but in the morning, I will have it up probably tonight, I will put a mix because we don't have enough time for me to do this. I will put what colors I did. Um, and so you know that it's it's several colors and it is whatever you have, but I mixed you know two colors to get the color that matched this flower perfectly and white and, a, and the green lime wedge. And this one I used mustard. So you can make do. The other thing is too, is that I did not have the right color of wire. And for these cards, I'm, I'm prepared. We're just not going to have time. For these cards, I didn't want the white wire. So, I, but I only have, well, I have other colors, but I didn't have it that matched. But the white is perfect. I took my Empress Gold and I sprayed it on my mat and I dyed my wire to match. So you can choose with these papers and with the Prima wires and all the different Prima products. I mean, there are so many possibilities. It's just like unbelievable. So that's where those go. And I will definitely post these um, and I'll, I'll do the color mixes so you know what I did to match the, to mix these colors to get them since we're out of time. Um, and then one last thing I did, <coughs> excuse me, other than that, everything is the same except that 
I did use the, um, I used the Choose Joy, Always Joy stamp. It's from the same collection. But in this case, I did the same embossing technique. And I used, um, it's a gold glitter embossing powder. So seriously, exact same design that y'all just saw. Just a different product. Every technique is the same. So you could take these anywhere. You could do, those, the ones I did would work for Easter, but you could use red and whites for Valentine's. So lots of possibilities. So I definitely wanted to show y'all that and share with that, share that with y'all tonight. All right, hang on because I'm fixing to move the camera. And let's see if we can keep you from getting sick. <laughs> okay, y'all, it was a little rough tonight, but I'm so glad y'all were here. And I love chatting with y'all when I'm not teaching, but I, I also love getting to do this. So thanks so much for coming. And uh, be sure to check out my blog and the Live with Prima blog. Uh, or uh, mm, Prima dog blog, prima.typepad.com. All right, good night, y'all.